G'day, Elizabeth. How are you? Good to see you, friends of mine. Have been studying biochemistry, and he says it's hard to find Randall cycle information in biochemical books plus nutritional books. They are hiding the info. I just think they're just ignorant of it. A lot of the biochemistry books are really reductionists. They just basically will tell you this is lipolysis, this is um, glycolysis, this is this um, um, process in the body, this is that process in a very reductionist way. And most people just learn it like slogans. Oh, that enzyme, that enzyme, that enzyme, that enzyme. And then you get this result. But the reality is the body doesn't work like that. Yes, it follows certain enzymatic pathways, but there are branches off those main pathways that can actually, because of other nutrients or signals, can actually be diverted. And if you get a different signal diverted in a different direction, you know, it's a bit like cysteine going either back to methionine or basically going down to taurine. Got it? It depends on the signaling that's actually coming in the body. So it's a very much complex picture. But if you think in reductionist terms, you think, oh, if that's a, oh, I must do this to get this to work in this way. No, this is interacting with all these other molecules, with all these pathways, plus signaling and then feedback loops. And potentially, if you do this, this and this, you may get a completely different effect. And, and sometimes we don't even know the effect. Why? Because it's very complex, um, you know, biochemical processes and interactions, and we've never done the real research on actual live human beings. So, yes, unfortunately, that is the reality of the state of affairs of academia. It doesn't. Enc it re it encourages reductionist thinking, and that's why we have those crackpots that Bart deals with that are just talking about this all nonsense. They take out the ge the gene and they go, "Oh, look at here." or you've just taken out the gene that actually has that alteration and effect to that, which nullifies that effect. So that doesn't, you know, it's just crazy stuff. And they would not understand a Randall cycle because Randall cycle is not a complicated concept, but it's not also an easy concept because it does have some level of complexity in terms of its gradients, how it affects, how genetic transcription can actually affect the gradients, um, how mitochondrial density can affect it, deuterium can affect um, you know, the mitochondrial density of, um, of your cells. So the cells having less mitochondrial density can take up less energy. So obviously the, the gradient um, can be hit at a much lower threshold. There's all these variations. So you can't actually just write it in a simple way. You have to basically be able to laterally think outside the sort of the just the reductionist box and that's hard for some people because they're not trained that way they're trained in this very reductionist way and philip randall even you know even though he published it back in 1963 still a lot of people that still don't understand it and still believe in um um you know calories in calories out and have no idea about the randall cycle and not even a lot of about the some of the German research that was done on hormones. It's just now they're starting to understand that and starting to talk, oh, hormones also play a role. But they still haven't linked it properly, and they ha still haven't linked it with Randall as well. It's piss poor out there. That's why they come up with some stupid conclusions and make arguments, which you can find all sorts of things, in the literature that actually contradict that. So you only have to find one high quality researcher that actually shows quite clearly that that mechanism doesn't work, that whole bullshit falls apart, but they will still stick to it. It's still in their books. It's ridiculous.